You are Locked On Patriots, your daily New England Patriots podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all of you, Foxborough faithful, and thank you once again for making Locked On Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage, and also, hopefully, your first listen each and every day. Remember, Locked On Patriots is not only a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day, but we're also free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. So smash that subscribe button, download, subscribe to, and follow Locked On Patriots wherever you get your podcasts to ensure that you get the latest episode as soon as it's available. I am your host, Mike DeBate. I cover your New England Patriots for Patriots Country of Sports Illustrated. So reach out to me and let me know what's on your mind on X at M-D-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. While you're out there showing some social media love to Locked On Patriots, please follow our account there as well at L-O underscore Patriots. And of course, today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app create an account, and use the code LOCKEDON for $20 off your first purchase. And Pats fans, sometimes health and mother nature collide, and it makes for a pretty messy partnership. It's exactly what's been going on here in the Lockdown Studios the last couple of days. A lot of you out there might be wondering, where are the mock drafts? Where's Murph? Well, folks, our good green buddy is feeling a bit under the weather today. So because of that, we're going to be bringing you the mock drafts here on Thursday. So be sure to stay locked in, folks. We have some amazing mock drafts all lined up for you. And most importantly, a tip of the cap to our good green friend. We all hope he's going to be feeling better soon. And unfortunately, the other side to that, the Mother Nature part of it, yeah, that wasn't pretty either. The wind and the soaking rain that we've been getting here in southern New England it's caused problems with the web connection here in the Locked On Studios. So while we get the matter fixed, we're still coming to you via audio, but graphically only on YouTube without the cameras. Stay locked in, folks. We're going to be back in a big way on Wednesday. The cameras will be back on, and we can't wait to bring you an action-packed week here on Locked On Patriots. So today we're going to pivot a bit, and we're going to be bringing you a Locked On Patriots All-Star Everyday Edition of the mailbag and folks we got three great and very poignant questions for you today from three self-professed locked on patriots everydayers and folks that's why i tell you always keep those questions coming in all the time you never know when one might get chosen to be shared here on locked on patriots so without further ado folks let's get right into it and our first question comes from perhaps our longest tenured everydayer and that is our good friend Ted in Chicopee, Mass. And Ted wants to know, did Gerard Mayo miss his chance to burn some cash for the Patriots in free agency? And Ted, this is a great question. And let's face it, folks. The Patriots were primed to be big spenders this offseason. We all thought they were going to be. Started the league year with more than $80 million in available cap space. They had plenty of problems to solve. And there was that decree from head coach Gerard Mayo to burn some cash. But the Patriots' approach to free agency has been best described, at least in my humble opinion, as frugal. I'm putting it pretty delicately. Some of you out there in the fan base have taken a more derisive tone when evaluating the Patriots' overall performance to date. And quite frankly, folks, I don't blame a lot of you for feeling that way. With the exception of re-signing Michael Wainu to a three-year, $57 million extension, the deals that the Patriots have signed have largely been devoid of big money transactions. In fact, New England has committed approximately $41 million in reported money to nine external free agents since the start of the league year on March 13th. But to answer your question, Ted, the Patriots are standing by their approach, and that's evident in the most recent comments made by Gerard Mayo. Gerard addressed his team's free agency tactics while speaking with reporters on Monday morning from the annual owners' meetings going on right now in Orlando, Florida. And as the Patriots look to upgrade several key positions, and they need to, folks, it was a team that finished 4-13 and last year. That's not acceptable. You know Gerard Mayo, Robert Kraft, and, of course, all of us here in the fan base want better than that. 
He explained that the Patriots are willing to spend, provide they receive a strong return on investment. And I'm quoting Gerard verbatim here. He says, everybody, the media, the fans, want that big signing. But at the same time, as we continue to put this team together, there has to be a process. When there is a guy that we want to get, the Crafts have already told us they'll spend the money. Offensively, this year, we were very picky. At the same time, that wasn't a very deep offensive free agency class to make that kind of splash. And if we're being fair to the Patriots and the front office and Gerard Mayo, Gerard's absolutely right here. The high salary cap allowed a lot of teams to be able to not only tag some players that were headed for free agency that the Patriots would have been interested in. T. Higgins, anyone? Yeah. I know there were trade rumors out there, but it definitely kept him from reaching the open market. It allowed players to remain with their current teams, either on the tag or by signing them to big money deals. But that being said, Gerard Mayo's use of the phrase, burn some cash, raised the expectations of the fan base, and understandably so. Because let's face it, there's a media-driven narrative out there that under Bill Belichick, the Patriots were averse to adding big-name talent on offense. They weren't going to pay for big-name wide receivers, or really, they weren't going to pay for any big-name free agent coming in. I encourage you to go take a look at 2021 and some of the deals that were made in the Belichick era, and you'll see that a lot of the criticism that Bill gets there is very selective. But I digress. Based on all of the talk about a new era here in Foxborough, a large section of all of you out there in Patriots Nation were expecting a game show style spending spree. And you wanted to see guys like Calvin Ridley or Tyron Smith as showcase showdown centerpieces when the Patriots went to claim their prize. Instead, the Patriots retained many of their own free agents, and they did add some impact depth pieces from outside the organization. And I think the Patriots were very smart here, bringing back not only Michael Wainu, but also guys like Kendrick Bourne, Hunter Henry. Josh Uche, Anthony Jennings, these are all impactful signings for the Pats. You want to retain your core guy. And that's a message that Gerard has been putting out a lot since he took the reins here as head coach in New England. But because the Patriots haven't necessarily lit the checkbook on fire yet, it's leading some to speculate some regret with regard to the choice of his words. Well, I can tell you folks from his recent comments, he doesn't. Once again, here are Gerard's words on the matter. I don't regret saying it, Gerard clarified. I didn't mean to burn some cash. I know we have a lot of cash to utilize, but we're going to utilize it the right way. We're going to be very convicted when we spend that cash. And I don't think anyone will begrudge the Patriots for that. You want to make sure that the investments that you're making are providing a solid return. And some of that means free agency, but the Patriots also realize that they can add impact players in the draft. And we're going to get to the draft in just a moment. But... Mayo and Director of Scouting Elliot Wolf are going to remain diligent in keeping all options open as they continue to build the team that they're eventually going to put on the field this season. At the same time, he was cautious. He cautioned the fans to remember that the process has to be done for the long-term good of the organization and not just the temporary gratification that we were all hoping for. Once again, I close with a quote from Gerard Mayo, and he says, we're trying to bring in pieces that we think are for the long term. Balancing that with short-term needs is always a hard thing to do. I understand the frustration of the fans, but I would just ask Patriots fans for patience. Once again, there will be players who hit the wire. There will be guys after the draft. So just kind of sit back and let us do our jobs moving forward. So, Ted, to answer your question, it looks like the Patriots don't believe that they've missed their opportunity to burn some cash. Maybe not as much cash as we all expected them to burn, but they still plan on investing in this team and fielding a unit they believe will be better than the 4-13 and team that took the field in 2023. Only time is going to tell whether or not that's actually true, but, but I would say that the window for the Patriots to improve this team is still open. Let's take a look and see what they're going to do with the draft. Let's also take a look and see what they're going to do with the post-draft wave of free agency. And then we can make an accurate assessment as to whether or not the Patriots miss their opportunity, or maybe that phrase, burn some cash, may come back to haunt Gerard Mayo throughout the year. I personally don't think it will. I chalk that up to a rookie head coach getting excited, saying, saying what we all felt at the time, that the Patriots' financial windfall of a wealth of cap space was going to make it an exciting offseason. And you see how the Patriots, or any other team really, if you think about it, 
have to allocate dollars to certain players makes it a little bit more difficult. Give Gerard Mayo an opportunity. Give Elliot Wolf an opportunity. And Ted, I think you'll see that the Patriots didn't necessarily have to burn cash to field a better unit than what we saw last season. So, Ted, thank you for submitting the question. A great one. And we're going to also move forward here on this special mailbag edition of Locked On Patriots because in just a moment, another valued everydayer wants us to check into that Foxborough crystal ball and see whether or not the man making the decision has done enough to earn the general manager's job. Yeah, we're going to be talking Elliot Wolf and the future of the Patriots front office when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast continues, a proud part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On listeners, we've all been there. You want tickets to the big game or your favorite musical artist, and you just can't find an easy and affordable way to get them? Well, you shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. Because game time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all of the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. And here's the part I love most. Game time's all-in prices show your total up front, so you know you're getting a great deal without all those hidden fees. Game time is actually obsessed with finding ways to help you save money on tickets. And that includes their zone deals, where you pick the section and game time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. Game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find the tickets in the same section and row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use the code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. So again, create an account, and redeem the code locked on L O C K E D O N for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Patriots fans, thank you once again for joining us here today on Locked On Patriots. It's an all star every day or episode of the Locked On Patriots mailbag today. And as we talked about in the previous segment, as Gerard Mayo continues to walk back those earn some cash comments. The Patriots' moves so far, mostly in free agency, continue to be under the microscope. And the man making those decisions, or at least the man primarily making those decisions, is Director of Scouting Elliot Wolf. And as we all know, the Patriots have yet to formally name a general manager. We can speculate all we want to about who that's going to be, but until they actually do it, that spot is still open. Elliot Wolf's title is still Director of Scouting, but the handwriting on the wall seems to indicate that Elliot is going to end up being the man. And that's the question we're going to answer today because another one of our valued everydayers here on Locked On Patriots, Ava in Rhode Island, wants to know, do you think Elliot Wolf has done enough to earn the general manager's job? And Ava, once again, this is a great question. And folks, whether or not you like the moves the Patriots have made, they've been active. They've signed their internal core free agents. We talked about a few of them in the previous segment. And they've also brought in some new faces. And Elliot Wolf has been a main reason why. He's been the driving force. And that's exactly as it should be. He's a football guy with a lot of pedigree, comes from a pretty extensive football background. And we all know that Robert Kraft has always prided himself as being an owner that lets football people make football decisions. And we saw him do it for 24 years up here in New England. Bill Belichick had the authority. He was the final say on personnel decisions. But Bill is no longer walking through that door. This is now more of a joint effort. And you're seeing Gerard Mayo have a lot of input. You're seeing Matt Groh continue to have a lot of input. But once again, that yet-to-be-named front office executive that we're all going to refer to as the general manager has yet to be named. More often than not, Elliot Wolf has acted as that front office executive. And apparently, one of his biggest fans is the team owner. That's a pretty good guy to have on your side. Robert Kraft met with the media on Tuesday morning from the NFL annual meetings, and from his statements, looks like he's a pretty big fan of the work that Elliot Wolf has been doing. Quoting Robert Kraft directly here, folks, the major decisions in my life, I've gone with my instincts. I think Elliot has good training, good pedigree, and we have a good group of young people. So right now, Ava, it would look like He's impressing the right people. Impressing the people at the top is always a good way to get ahead. 
And you can't really argue with Elliot's resume. He talked about good pedigree. He's absolutely right. And we'll get back to that pedigree in just a moment. But what Elliot has done here in New England is impressive. Since 2022, he's been the director of scouting here in New England. He was the first to ever hold that title in this organization. And he did so in only a couple of years. Don't forget, Elliot came on board in 2020 under Bill Belichick. He handled scouting duty. He was a player personnel consultant. So Elliot had his hand in a lot of front office business here for the New England Patriots. And of course, you talk about the pedigree, you cannot argue with the background. The son of Hall of Fame executive Ron Wolf, and we all know Ron's resume, he built a Super Bowl champion for the Green Bay Packers, and he contributed to other successful teams with the Raiders organization. And Elliot himself has actually worked with some pretty good organizations as well. He spent time with the Packers, spent time with the Cleveland Browns. He held executive titles in both scouting and assistant general manager. And since Gerard Mayo has come on board as the head coach, Elliot's been intricately involved in the interview process for the assistant coaches that Gerard Mayo has brought in. New offensive coordinator Alex Van Pelt, offensive assistant Ben McAdoo, and defensive line coach Jerry Montgomery all worked with Wolf during their mutual time with either the Packers or the Browns. So right there, you're seeing Elliot Wolf put his stamp on this coaching staff. He also played a key role in the Patriots' free agent strategy. Since the start of the league year, the Pats have retained the services of a lot of their internal free agents, Michael Wainu being the most prominent, Josh Uche, Kendrick Bourne, Hunter Henry. We talked about the list in the previous segment. They placed the transition tag on Kyle Duggar, and they also added some very valuable depth players, such as offensive lineman Chooks Akorafor, Antonio Gibson at the running back position, and receiver K.J. Osborne. Now, the Patriots are going to pivot, and they are going to turn their attention to the NFL draft. And to quote the godfather, Ava, this is where Elliot Wolf is going to quote-unquote make his bones. We all know that the Patriots are strongly considering taking a young quarterback prospect with the number three overall pick in April's draft. In fact, a lot of that speculation came from Elliot's words himself. He said that he's looking for a franchise fit, someone who's not only capable of playing the game at a high level, but also being able to handle the additional pressures, which are certain to arise as an NFL quarterback. In other words, folks, he doesn't want guys falling apart when things go wrong and then having a problem like we had last year on our hands. And apparently, they're pretty impressed by the talent that they see available for this year's draft. Once again, quoting Elliott verbatim, I think it's a really good year for quarterbacks. We have to evaluate their strengths and their weaknesses and determine what's best for the team. We have to determine who can handle being the quarterback of the New England Patriots. And if we're taking Elliott at his word here, you know that right up until the Patriots make that pick on April 25th, that the Pats are going to continue to remain linked to Caleb Williams, Drake May, Jaden Daniels. And there's a strong push now coming for Michigan's J.J. McCarthy, who had a tremendous and apparently eye-opening performance at his pro day. Now, Caleb is most likely going to the Bears at number one. I don't see a scenario where that doesn't happen unless things really sour between now and then or unless Caleb comes out and said, I don't want to play in Chicago. I don't think any of those are going to happen, so you can pretty much take him off the board. That leaves Drake, Jaden, and potentially JJ. So it's looking like Elliott is ready to find his guy, his new guy under center that's going to lead this team for the foreseeable future. Now, keep in mind that Gerard Mayo was a little less committal when he spoke to the media on Monday than Elliott has been in the past. These are the most recent comments from Gerard Mayo, and really the most recent comments when it comes to anyone in the Patriots' brain trust regarding who they may select or what they may do with their number three pick in the NFL draft. Mayo said, quote, we sit at a very enviable spot at number three. We can take someone there, or if someone offers a bag, as we would say, a lot of first round picks, we're open to trading the pick, we're open to taking a guy there. We definitely have to talk about those things as we continue to put together this team. So naturally, the Patriots don't want to tip their hand too much. If a team's going to call and offer an overwhelming package that the Patriots simply can't refuse, yeah, they're going to take a good look at that and they may even consider doing it. But I'm not so sure the Patriots are willing to walk away from taking the quarterback at number three. Not with what Elliot Wolf had to say earlier, and especially when you add in Robert Kraft's comments from Tuesday morning, kind of becomes a little more clear. Don't forget, Robert Kraft is not only the owner of the team, he's a lifelong fan. 
And if you don't think what the owner has to say has any value to the members of that front office, yeah, I don't know what to tell you. It definitely has at least somewhat of an impact. And Robert Kraft said it. He said, quote, as a fan, I'd like to see a quarterback. So there you have it, folks. But he continued. He said, we're going to be open to whatever can come our way. I'll let the team make the decision on what they think is best. One way or another, I'd like to see us get a top-rate quarterback. So that may sound like the decision is made, but Ava, to bring your question full circle, if Elliot Wolf can make that happen, bring in a top-rate quarterback, no matter where he does it, maybe he trades down a little bit and reads the board and is able to get J.J. McCarthy a few picks down from number three, still maximizing their draft capital and maybe picking up a couple of first-rounders, That'd be ideal if the Patriots are set on Drake May or Jaden Daniels at number two, depending on who Washington takes, you're looking at two guys that can probably be franchise quarterbacks in this league. If any of those scenarios play out, I think Elliot Wolf cements his place in the Patriots front office, and I don't think they'll hesitate to give him that general manager's title. That being said, even if he doesn't, I still think he gets that job based on what he's done so far, and based on the fact that he's impressed not only Gerard Mayo, but most importantly, Robert Kraft. And ultimately, the owner is going to be making that decision. So, Ava, once again, a great question and a very poignant. The two questions that we got right off the bat here on this makeshift impromptu mailbag episode really tie into the business that the Patriots are trying to transact down in the NFL owners meetings. But we're going to close today with a former fan favorite up here in New England and whether or not the Patriots might be considering bringing an old friend back in to mentor one of their young and most exciting prospects in the defensive backfield. Yeah, folks, an eye on old number 24. And with all due respect to my childhood favorite, Ty Law, that's not who I'm talking about right now. Closing up the mailbag with some Gilly Lock talk here on Locked On Patriots when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast continues right here on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Locked On listeners, say goodbye to busted brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every game of the tourney. Whether you're betting on a big upset or on a number one seed, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Test your confidence with FanDuel because right now, new customers can get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. That's 200 bucks to use on point spreads, money lines. You can even pick who's going to win it all. Just visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets. FanDuel.com slash locked on. Patriots fans, thank you once again for joining us here today on this all-star every day or locked on Patriots mailbag episode. And before we close up an amazing mailbag here on locked on Patriots, folks, if you're tired of having to turn down the volume with all that shouting going on when you're trying to get your sports news each and every day, it's time to make the switch to locked on sports today. Locked On Sports Today is a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the screaming. At Locked On Sports Today, you will get local experts on the biggest stories, in-depth analysis, and strong opinions from those with the team every day. Make the switch today to Locked On Sports Today, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network your team every day and folks your team your new england patriots have serious problems to solve and fortunately they're putting together the team of serious people they need to solve them in place as we speak but even though it's a new era and everyone's looking to the future here in new england sometimes it's nice to go back in time a little bit because that can be beneficial and folks, our third and final question is going to do just that today. It comes to us from Derek in Glens Falls, New York. And don't let the New York fool you, folks. Glens Falls is not too far away from the Vermont border. I really appreciate your support. Bravo, Derek. Rep and Patriots Nation from just north of Albany. We're glad to have you with us here on Locked On Patriots. And a great question he has because Derek wants to know, Mike, should the Patriots consider bringing back Stefan Gilmore as a mentor to Christian Gonzalez? Derek, quite honestly, yes, they absolutely should. In fact, I think they should bring him back, even if he's not going to be a mentor to Christian. 
I think he's still got a good amount left in the tank, and I would love to see Stefan Gilmore back here in New England. As the great Don would say, I'm going to give you my reasons. Let's start with the four seasons he spent here with the Patriots. Highly praised, accordingly decorated. I've said before, one of the classiest and most humble athletes I've ever covered, but let's start with his prowess on the field. Defensive Player of the Year in 2019, he led the league that year with six interceptions and 20 pass breakups. He also extended his Pro Bowl selections to four. He received two first-team All-Pro selections, and he was a member of the team that won a Super Bowl title in Super Bowl 53. Made the game ceiling interception, and Stefan really, I think, has done enough to be a legend here in New England, even if he does not step foot on a Gillette Stadium field again. And the thought of Stefan coming back here to New England is not just a fan's dream. Stefan may actually be open to a Patriots return as he continues to mull his options on the free agent market. And once again here, I'm quoting verbatim, Patriots insider Karen Garigian of Mass Live, one of the best in the business, says, while Stefan Gilmore stated his preference is to return to the Dallas Cowboys, where he provided a much-needed boost for Jerry Jones' defense last season, a source told Mass Live the veteran corner was open to all options, including another go-round with the Patriots. Now, at least in my opinion, Derek, the Patriots would unquestionably welcome Stephon Gilmore back to the field. They know that his prowess is going to give them an opportunity to win, and his experience and veteran presence, two things he really brought to the Cowboys last year, could indeed play an influential role in the development of Christian Gonzalez. So Derek, again, I think you're right on that. We'll come back to Christian in just a moment. Let's take a look at what Stefan has done lately. You can't rest on laurels and just expect the guy that won Defensive Player of the Year back in 2019 to walk through the door as if nothing has changed. You got to take a look at what he's done. And I thought he had a very good season in Dallas last year. He appeared in all 17 games, 68 total tackles, 13 pass breakups, two interceptions, and one forced fumble. Now, those numbers are not going to illuminate the stat sheet when you look at the top cornerbacks in the league, but his contributions to Dallas were as much about leadership as they were about on-field ability. Don't forget, the Cowboys brought him in via trade, not simply as a free agent acquisition, so they did have to surrender draft capital to get him, a fifth-round compensatory selection in last year's draft. Now, Gilmore was going to come in. He was going to be an experienced presence in the Cowboys' secondary. A lot of people thought he'd be opposite Trayvon Diggs. Unfortunately, Diggs suffered an ACL tear during one-on-one -on -one practice drills in September. That put an abrupt end to his season. And because of that, Gilmore was once again thrust into a prominent role in helping to keep Dallas' cornerback room focused. He did that. He had the talent to lead the Cowboys secondary, but his leadership helped second-year cornerback Deron Bland emerge, and he became their primary option at the position. Duran broke up 15 passes for the Cowboys, he led the NFL with nine interceptions, and he really adapted Stephon Diggs' aggressive play style in the secondary. But if you ask Duran Bland, he's going to credit Stephon Gilmore's leadership as one of the big reasons why he was able to emerge. And he's routinely praised Gilmore's willingness to lend in and helping to bring him to the upper echelon of the NFC's defensive backs. So to your point, Derek, I think Stefan can do the same thing that he did with Gonzalez that he did with Bland. And folks, I know a lot of you do. I really hope all of you haven't forgotten just how special of a player Christian Gonzalez was looking to become prior to his injury. Earning Defensive Rookie of the Month honors for September. We all know the rookie campaign cut short after jamming his shoulder in a tackle attempt in week four, ironically against Gilmore and the Cowboys. But in that three games and the one quarter of play that he did play against Dallas, Christian earned 17 total tackles, three pass breakups, one interception, and a week one sack of Philadelphia Eagles cornerback Jalen Hurts that I still love to watch on a loop over and over again, came around on the quarter blitz and really one of my favorite plays of the year for the Patriots. But most importantly, Christian was credited with allowing only 11 catches on 20 targets for 124 yards and zero touchdowns. I know it's only three and a quarter games, folks. But when you look at the fact that he's a rookie, that is impressive. So you bring in Stephon Gilmore at age 33, still among one of the better players at his position when he's healthy and playing at a high level. So when you look at his on-field skills, you look at his leadership abilities, 
I think that should make him a strong consideration for the Patriots in the coming days. In my humble opinion, I think he'd be a great fit here in New England. That Gilly Lock aura is still here in Foxborough, and I think him coming back in would be a real boost to this team, especially in that defensive backfield. I think he would look great for any team in need of a solid veteran presence in the secondary. I know reports on Tuesday said that the Carolina Panthers might be interested in bringing him back, but look, bottom line, at the risk of sounding biased, Derek, I don't think there's any better place than Foxborough, Massachusetts for the Gilly Lock to have a second tour of duty. So Patriots fans, who knows? Maybe that is in store. Maybe Stefan would end up elsewhere. But in my humble opinion, I think the Patriots should strongly consider bringing him back at the right price. And Derek, once again, thank you for a great question. Folks, thank you for sending in your questions. And a special tip of the cap to Ted, to Ava. And, of course, to Derek for all of your great questions. And, folks, once again, stay locked in to the Locked On Patriots podcast. Our mock drafts will be coming at you on Thursday. A special crossover edition that I'm not going to ruin here right now. I want you to check that out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's just say it's going to involve the number three in the 2024 NFL draft. And, of course, folks, stay with us throughout the week. Some special guests lined up and a lot of exciting stuff coming here to Locked On Patriots. And once again, I thank all of you for spending time here with us on Locked On Patriots and making us a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage. Once again, I'm your host, Mike DeBate, and I remind you all to stay safe and to stay well and to be the change you wish to see in the world. Have a great day, everyone. We'll see you back here on camera tomorrow on Locked On Patriots.